Segment 4a, solar versus sidereal day. At any one time, the sunlight strikes half the Earth, leaving one half in sunlight and the other half in darkness. In this particular illustration, we see a time of year which is the northern hemisphere summer, where the polar axis of the Earth is pointed a bit towards the sun, so the light is striking more in the northern hemisphere than the southern hemisphere. The Earth turns, as you see in the illustration, from west to east, and the sun then appears to move from east to west across the sky throughout the day. One important concept that we need to know in order to follow the following discussion is the concept of the local meridian. This is an imaginary line extending from due north through overhead to due south. Stars and the sun reach their highest altitude when they cross the meridian. They'll rise in the east set in the west, reaching their highest point exactly halfway across the sky along this imaginary line. The solar day is defined as the time from noon to, to the next noon, so from when the sun crosses the meridian to when the sun next crosses the meridian. And this day is four minutes longer than the sidereal day, the time from when a star crosses the meridian on one day until it crosses it again the next. So what is responsible for this difference in the amount of time that it takes? That we can see in the next illustration. As the Earth orbits the Sun, it moves along it, it moves along its circular path. And so in the top uh, instance where the Earth is, we imagine that there's a star directly behind the Earth at uh, sorry, directly behind the Sun at very great distance. One day later, the Earth has moved one, roughly 1 360th along its orbit, so uh, one degree uh, angle is formed between its previous position with respect to the Sun and its current position. So to point back towards the Sun, the Earth has to rotate one degree farther than it has to, to in order to be back pointing at that star again. And that one degree takes about 1 360th of a day, which corresponds to four minutes. Those are the extra four minutes that it takes to get the sun back to the meridian compared to what it takes to get a star back to the meridian. So we define two types of time. Solar, wh what we also know as civil time, which uh, is based on where the sun is in the sky. <coughs> and this time is 24 hours from noon to noon. It's interesting to note that in the past, Time, local time was defined just by when the sun crossed the meridian everywhere. Now we have the time zones that define time, and those were set up in order to be able to have some uniformity where the time was the same everywhere. It w standard time was originally known as railroad standard time, which was uh, set up primarily because of the, the trains having to keep schedules, and so you couldn't have the clocks running at different speeds in it, it, on different times in different uh, neighboring towns, and railroad time was transmitted from place to place by using the telegraph. So solar time is the, the time based on noon to noon of the sun. Sidereal time is based on where the stars in the sky, and a sidereal day is the consecutive meridian crossings of some given star. So one sidereal day, is 24 sidereal hours, is, a, is just a little bit shorter than a civil day. It's 23 hours and 56 minutes of a civil day. As the Earth goes around the Sun, then, the Sun is in front of different stars at different times of year, and this di diagram illustrates that very clearly, showing our position on the sky is that pink circle there, with the distant constellations being uh, along a line to the Sun at different times of year. As a consequence, different stars are, are visible at night at different times of year because, because they're uh, not in, on the same side as the sun at that time. Objects rise and cross your meridian and set about two er hours earlier each successive month, which is four minutes earlier each successive night. So it's very easy to figure out rising changes in rising setting times. Just think about those two hours a month or those uh, four minutes a day, and remember that the stars rise and set earlier. From our point of view, the sun sits in front of different stars at different times of year, but on any given day, it moves through the sky like a star at the equivalent distance from the equator. 
So for example, at the vernal equinox and the autumnal equinox, when the sun uh, is on the celestial equator, it, it follows exactly the path that a star would follow on the day, rising due east and setting due west. At the summer solstice, when the sun is 23 and a half degrees of, uh, north of the equator, it rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest and spends more than 12 hours up in the sky.